So today we are going to be talking about the pain problem, the problem with our perception of pain. Hmm. Wow. I think in our society, in our world, a lot of it is built upon the idea of pain relief or avoiding pain, pain at all costs. It is why there's an opioid crisis. It is why people feel paralyzed, like how we talked about in the last episode. It's why people are not willing to live their life sometimes because they are, there's pain that comes with it. But I think you must distinguish, right? The physical pain, you break a leg, throw a muscle, that's a physical pain, mm. right? But I don't think that's what you're talking about. You're talking about the psychological pain, mm. right? So we are not talking about the actual biological and, pain. But sometimes like with the opioid crisis, some of it started with a physical pain. But that pain physically disappeared, but you need to remove the pain. Uh, to no, but that's a small proportion. Yeah. The people who take some drugs for pain relief and eventually they kept taking, there's a small proportion. Mm. That's not what we are talking about. So we are not talking about physical pain. We are talking about um, the pain that we probably created or mm. psychological pain and it appears that pain appears very real. Mm -hmm. No, and, and what I'm saying is that like, that is a small proportion but sometimes that physical pain and the need to like get rid of it is triggered through like that the emotional pain is triggered okay. to a physical experience. I hear you. So so one, one thing we must first start. A pain in this context is a created phenomenon. Right? Uh, this pain that we are assuming it's painful is a created phenomena. Like somebody says, oh my God, I don't have a million dollars in my bank account and I'm in pain. Like, that's not a pain. Mm -hmm. That's, yes, it is a pain because you have an expectation. Right? Oh, I put on three kilos extra. My God, I'm in such pain. So, are we talking about a phantom phenomena? Mm -hmm. So we establish, yeah, even though the pain looks very real, it, might, it, it, it is a phantom. It is not real. It is something you created based on a mindset, based on a condition, based on a perception, right? Mm. Or is it not? And maybe it feels very real because it sits in the body and the body can actually have a physical pain. Mm. Right? If I take a stick and whack on your head, you're going to feel pain. So maybe it has taken the physical pain and this is, this, what do you call that? This phantom pain sits on it. Hmm. And one can't make a, dis one can't tell a difference which is real and which is created, right? I think more people kill themselves because of uh, psychological pain than actual. Would you say that? Yes. Okay. Now we are asking, how is this pain created? I give an analogy. Eh? Buddha's idea of being free of pain is be a nobody. Mm. Be broke, be a monk, quit everything. Then you are freed of the pain. He's right too. He's saying because of your desire is why you are suffering. Right? So if you don't have desire, you are a nobody and you accept that, I guess you have no pain. But I don't agree with that methodology, you know. Even though it is a solution. Like if I don't think I'm smart and somebody calls me stupid, I'm like, I'm not going to feel anything, right? So what are we talking about? I think you are trying to, we are trying to inquire the myth of pain. That how we have participated in making it a pain. And if that is true, then I can participate in removing the pain. Mm -hmm. So I set myself up to suffer. Like if somebody is walking around thinking they are the best, you know sooner or later they're going to get hurt. I'm the one, I'm the, I'm the, the bestest in the world, or so whatever they walk around. Mm -hmm. Something is going to happen and this person is going to, right? I, I'll quote this and I quote Mike Tyson on this, you know. I was growing up watching him. He was 
a beast, right? He was knocking people out in the first round, second round. He was amazing until he got knocked out. But do you know what I saw? How he came out of it. I liked it, you know. Even though he was the man, when he got knocked out, he actually became someone very beautiful, you know. Mm. So the pain of not being the one was processed by him very differently. He had his own journey. He went to prison. He had all kinds of things that happened to him. But lately, I was watching him, you know. And, I, and I'm hearing him talk. It, it feels like a very grown, adult, beautiful human being, you know. He didn't make that a pain. He made it a liberation. Mm. So, could the phantom be you missed the liberation? When it's supposed to free you from something you were doing that is setting you up, so I'm asking, I'm just asking, I'm not telling this answer. I'm asking, could this phantom pain or psychological pain is there because we miss the liberation? To think I'm the one is natural. You want to be the one. Mm. And suddenly you realize you are not the one. You are feeling pain, right? Mm. By right, you must use that pain to liberate from that notion you are the one. Mm. Then neither the pleasure or the pain exists. You are freed from it, isn't it? Mm. So could this pain that people are feeling is a setup? Our society sets us up and then sells us the remedy. And then it makes us to have a goal not to have a pain. It's like this, you know. They advertise a nice car. You don't have that car. Now you're in pain. Oh my God, I don't have a car. I should have a car. Then to liberate yourself from the pain to buy the car. I once remember this. I tell you a long time ago now. I was... I was with some group and there was some heavy motivational speech about success and I don't even know what I was doing there, but I was there witnessing. You should make it, everybody should be a millionaire, rah, 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 rah. And there was this guy who came in smiling, happy, such a beautiful temperament in an old motorbike. Parked his motorbike, was listening to himself. By the time he was going back, he was talking to himself. Mm. I, I could see him go back and he was like, like devastated. What happened? Earlier he was perfectly fine with his bike. And now he goes back and saying, oh my God, I'm poor, I'm nobody. Not that they told him you could be richer too. They made him reject what he has. Yeah. So could I say they install pain? Oh, you don't have a degree. You must feel bad. Mm. No. Right? Oh my God, you are not, you should be 20 kilos lesser. You should feel bad. Then they are selling you something. So could it be in the name of selling we created a relief. In order to sell the relief, I must create the pain. Right? Hmm. You know something, you must hear this. When I was growing up, and I don't know whether you were confronted, the people who had six packs are usually carpenters and uh, construction builders. So if anybody has a six pack, they make, make fun of them as somebody poor and doing laborers job. Now people walk in six pack and you go like, oh my God. When I was growing up, if you don't have a little tummy, you're not a couple of pounds overweight, you're a poor guy. You watch how the narrative changed. Now somebody doesn't have a six pack, he's sad. Hmm. Right? So could we admit that eh, pain could be something that was created for something to be sold to us and a lot of us bite into it. Right? Is there real pain? There should be the pain of loving, the pain of longing to do something right. That's also pain. Like you saw, the artist is working. It's in pain because it's not coming right. But that's right pain, isn't it? Mm. That's a pain that inspires you to do more. If you watch your children not being fed properly or can't have the good opportunity because you're not making money, that should be a pain. But mm. that pain should drive you to do more. Hmm. Right? So we are distinguishing this physical pain, phantom pain, and some pains are beautiful. You know, one of the most important things I teach, Amshi, I teach people to apologize. I say, apologize. So why should I apologize? You can be more. Hmm. I said, if you love somebody, if that love doesn't come with an apology, you don't love them. Because you know you can be more. Not that the other is demanding it. Yeah. That apology is a kind of living the pain. I know I can be better. I'm not yet. So sorry. 
and it, it's such a gesture you know isn't it hmm. so now what are you inquiring what pain are, are you talking about me <laughs> no 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 not you oh. <laughs> no but what what is the inquiry it feels like it's over simplified isn't it yeah No and it's like how you perceive pain right like when we learned when i was doing ballet like standing on a point shoe it's not for everybody it really freaking hurts but you do it and you do it and you do it and then you get the the pirouette that's perfect and you did it on point and it doesn't hurt anymore because you are amazed at yourself and it's not pain the pain the physical pain was there the mental pain of am i good enough can i do it that was there but it is in pursuit of being the best dancer you can be but it's easy for me to understand it in that context but when you bring it to more emotional and to life and not to sport it's harder to grasp right is it i think so i think the 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 the, the real pain your pain mm. is your inspiration i think what you are trying to talk about the pain that is installed by the society that you bought in that is not yours yeah So a real pain, physical pain we talked mm. about, and also the actual pain, it can be an inspiration. Mm. It shows that you can be more. Like you're doing point or whatever, mm. so I can understand that. But <laughs> you went through it and that pain delivered the joy that you experienced. So you can't mm. avoid that pain. I think the subject you're talking about is the condition pain. And I also think it's our need to sedate ourselves from pain. Yeah, agree. There's something Gurjeev used to say, you know. See, if you ever want to grow in life, learn the art of conscious suffering. Consciously go through the pain, embrace the pain. It's like gym, lah. When you do the squat, trust me, not anybody, not everybody wants to squat. There'll be one in one hundred fellow who'll irritate us, who loves squats, but the rest of us who do it, we embrace the pain. Mm. Right? But we embrace the pain, and afterward, we embrace the reward too. Yeah. Okay. So I think the subject you want to talk about when there is pain. How do I approach it? Is it Yeah, and how do we maneuver ourselves in a way that we are unafraid of pain? It is not a problem. Yeah. It is a problem now in the world. Yeah. Like the pain yeah. problem. You know because you know why we are in a rush. Mm. Mm-hmm. we overwhelm ourselves like if i'm talking about squatting or bench press start small build with everything slowly like rejection can be a pain right but get accustomed with little bit learn to process the small pain the problem is people avoid pain and when it hits them they get overwhelmed then they're in medication they're in all kinds of things right so so now what are we talking about maybe pain cannot be avoided pain must be embraced and maybe the insight you must have is don't let it overwhelm you develop a system that can process the pain rightly right could the pain be is time to grow right like if you work out and your muscle hurts you either tore a muscle or your body is building mm so our perception is Why pain is such a problem is we are refusing to grow. We are lazy. We want to remain the way we are. Hmm. Think about it. So could it be what you're asking me about pain is the essential question is am I refusing to grow? Am I stubborn? I want the world to yield to me. I will not grow and meet the world. Yeah. And the refusal to grow could it be what is reflected as a pain? Definitely. Okay. But for some people I think that there's comfort in the refusal to grow. There's yeah. comfort in the pain. Of course. They use it when somebody is in pain, they they use it to be narcissistic. Mm. You know somebody is in pain, they can ask everybody else to stand down, they can cut the line. so mm. that pain can be abused too so that's not a real pain so you are really opening up huh? a very very complicated subject you know it's a very big subject mm. right so now 
could the answer be if i can celebrate the pain hmm i don't create this personality that i should be pain free at all time yeah like some people have no you i'm stressed i'm stressed i need to take this i need to drink alcohol i said why don't you learn to live in stress a little bit that's what happens hmm. but you said it we probably are addicted to be a pain free society hmm. and that is created by the pharmaceutical the drugs the the soft drinks and entertainment all the opioids opioid and and can we say i have an opioid pathway that can be abused yeah so our idea that we should live pain free is the wrong idea it's almost like like we know in society that we uh, people there's pain we know we can all agree that there's pain pain is doesn't feel good we all want to feel good and as like humans we have a like a weakness within us where we can become addicted to feel good things that suppress our pain right. and so society feeds us that in all sorts of ways it doesn't have to be drugs it can so, be anything yeah so can i say the society has a capacity to manipulate us using our pain receptors yes very good so you're establishing so like this huh? tell a story i was in india you were there your kids like you were six seven years old i went to this particular fortress fort i'm very like kind of like oh this is my ancestry you know my mm. your grandmother was from there i was like wow the whole thing palace and all that and suddenly i saw some poor people a mother with three kids or something and like they were like in a bad shape mm. i mean eaten or something it stopped me on my track you know of course i gave some money whatever i could i came home i did not eat i ate one meal for 3 years i just i was in pain i'm like what am i how is what is my answer that's how friends to mankind was born mm. so that pain was a necessary pain for something beautiful to be born could it be our refusal to 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 acknowledge embrace our pain prevents us from growing and the more we don't grow the more we are in pain hmm and the society sells us opioid yeah i go home on the netflix and just 6 hours goes by yeah i'm just doped up by somebody else's story or oh, like i was reading these like reddit threads about long term weed marijuana users and they i was like we were just reading about it and they were like oh, what is your experience and this guy was like well i wouldn't say it had such a negative impact on my life or anything like that but i could just get through life go to work I never really felt the need to do more. Mm. I just come home. I I I have dinner with my kids, my wife, I go down to the basement, I smoke a joint, watch TV, go to bed. Yeah. That the inciting force was sort of taken from me. So the inciting force is also the pain. Yes. So the pain has a positive component to it mm. that you lose when you just become addicted to be pain free. Yeah. and i think we are all bribed by everybody you know he makes me happy she makes me happy that makes me happy i have managed to avoid pain which means when i avoid pain i avoid growing i avoid being challenged i avoid building muscle madam mm. <laughs> i go to the gym to embrace pain yeah then only my muscle grows yeah it's like we i think everybody it's almost like everybody's willing to let go of how good it can be because if it's going to be that good you can also feel that bad right. what is your insight what do you think we should do feel it hmm? feel it cry let it be sad i was telling amma a few weeks not a few months ago i was like i'm feeling a bit depressed and i don't know why i'm just feeling this i can't shake it off she was like how about you just go home and be depressed and i was like okay So I just went home and I watched a shitty sad movie and I cried in my bath. I just felt depressed. And then I felt a bit better because you just lean into that pain. And that was when I was deciding if I wanted to apply, if I wanted mm. to leave. I was very like perplexed. Right. But I had to just feel it. No, but I guess that's the birth pain. Hmm. I don't think anybody has an orgasmic birth. Everybody goes through hell in birth pain. So I think we have been persuaded to look at pain wrongly. Mm. we have not been taught to look at pain as a birth pain mm. i i think if you can't feel the depth of pain you cannot you know i remember when when appa whatever happened the awakening happened to appa 
the weeks, eh, months, eh, and I threw away all the books I had. I wish I didn't now. And the pain I felt was that they lied to me. There was a pain. Mm-hmm. They lied to me. This whole people lied to me about this truth, about enlightenment, about meditation, about personal development. I like. I went through the psychology phase and I got disillusioned. Then I went into the therapy phase. I got disillusioned. Then I went into this whole meditation, enlightenment, and then whatever happened to me afterward, I realized they all lied to me. Mm. That pain is what propelled me to do everything I did. Without that rage, mm. I wouldn't have been able to survive the last thirty years. So not the pleasure, you know, not mm. the bliss, the anger. Like you lied to me, and without that pain, I wouldn't have moved and done what I did. Because like pleasure and bliss and happiness kind of can keep you just yeah chilling. Actually, what is pleasure and bliss? There is no need to grow, no need to respond. No need to work. So you are saying no need to work, no need to respond, no need to grow is your happiness, mm. which is the enemy to you, isn't it? There's this um this guy. His name is Jonathan Van Ness. He's a he's like a hairdresser, but he does this show called. Queer Eye. Have you heard of it? Like there'll be like five gay guys and they go to like all these different parts of like middle America and they like help people like like they refresh their life. They help them like do their house, help them like groom. It's a very, very sweet and heartwarming <laughs> show. And <laughs> Why would I do I'm going to make you watch it. Okay, okay you're going to watch it tonight. Okay. But he was on a podcast and he said that like he over time because he's like this beacon of joy. He's this Big guy, six foot three or something like that. Long hair with a mustache, wearing a dress. Like it's, okay. it's so f- he's he's this joyful character. He almost looks like somebody drew him out of a children's book. But he came out saying he's got HIV positive. He's had a lot of like bad experiences, and he said an insight where he was like, "I realized that I kept trying to suppress the bad feelings and suppress them and suppress them, but so your body cannot understand." Suppressing one and not the other. I'm suppressing this emotion. I suppress all emotion. Right. So he said, I suppress the pain, but I suppress the joy, the laughter, the happiness, the euphoria. All of that was gone. And I was just like, damn. Then you have to embrace pain. But it's a very, very difficult subject. Even when I say embrace the pain, am I asking you to be okay with suffering? I think embrace the pain to transform it. Embrace the pain, not to remain in pain. Embrace the pain to evolve. Think about it. Hmm. So, could pain be our refusal to evolve? But you know that we can say embrace the pain, right? But there's some pain. I feel like, how do you even begin to embrace that kind of pain? You know, when somebody like, like loses a child, they no, you, they you s- cannot. The other day, there's someone who lost a child. I told them, you will never be the same again. And this will never go away. You will embrace it and live it as you. I love mm-hmm. something once Osho said, you know, very beautifully said. He said, look into my eyes. He said, you will see bliss, but you'll also see a deep sorrow. Mm. And I was like, wow. He said, look into my eyes. You will see a bliss, but you'll also see a sorrow. But I suspect what he's saying is, see what I've come to see what else I'm struggling to wake up for all to. So could the pain be what is not yet? Mm. So it's about what I, where I am and where I can be. Maybe the pain relief is to pretend you already are there, mm. which means you're denying your evolution, right? Mm. I am not saying be in pain. I'm saying being in pain means I will never evolve. Right? And I guess so people want to rush through the painful experience. No, like what you said, they made being pain-free the goal. Yeah. To be doped up, to remain. Hmm. Like I was in, we were in Rishikesh, remember up there in the mountains and a lot of the yogis were smoking ganja. I wasn't there, you know, I would have joined them if I was there. Hmm. And they all were smoking this big <laughs> joint and saying, oh, we are all blissful. I'm looking at them and say, you're not blissful, you're just doped. <laughs> you're just stoned. Uh, you're just stoned and, and you being in a place as though there is no demand to grow does not make you an enlightened person, sir. <laughs> like as though I'm already good, I'm chilled, I'm, I have reached zenith. Lying to yourself doesn't deny. But we must say, whenever we have pain, our first instinct is to get rid of it. Mm, yeah. 
maybe that is the instinct we must change. From getting rid of it, maybe we should evolve. Like I lift weight, pain, right? Mm. I can drop and carry a lighter weight or I can say my muscle will grow. The same weight will not feel that painful anymore. Mm. If I do 20 kilo bicep curl, it's going to burn, right? But I know in a few months, 20 kilo will not feel that heavy. I've grown, right? So is pain a necessary component to trigger growth in us? Like I'm using exercise as an analogy. Mm. Yeah? They say the last three rep is what counts. Last three rep. You do eight rep. The last three rep is the only thing that's going to make a difference. And the other day I was reading up. They say it recruits some, some receptors in the muscles. You know, we use this, the temporal receptor. We don't use the core receptor. And in order to do the core receptor, you must lift a weight that you can only do two push. Which means you are deliberately causing pain to trigger the growth within you, right? Mm. But I think this can only happen if you become conscious. Unconsciously, I think we are designed to escape pain. Yeah. Yeah, so, like when you get, when I was getting a tattoo, I always saw my tattoo artist, I need to watch you do it so I can tell my brain that I want this. When I look away, my brain is like, why are you not pulling your leg away from this pain? No, no that's your dad. <laughs> <laughs> your dad telling, don't get the tattoo. Last one, I promise. <laughs> now, so what is it? I think we have come into a very beautiful subject, you know. Conscious. Deliberate embracing of pain. It's not going to happen unconscious. Unconsciously, we have created the world. We created mm -hmm. an environment where we will not grow, we will not evolve. We will avoid pain at all costs, right? So could it be only when I'm deliberate, I'm conscious that I can embrace the pain and transform? Mm. Follow? Then the pain becomes a blessing. Mm. Until then, the pain is perceived as a curse. Conscious meaning what, you know? Like how you could go through the tattoo mm. or how somebody could lift a weight. How somebody could read something they can't grasp. But to consciously go there, that means I must consciously choose to evolve. So could it be the only free will we have is the will and the willingness to evolve? Yeah. And we must be very careful. We have the opioid path. We also want to escape pain. So it's a dance between that two, right? Mm. We also want ease. We also want rest. We also want comfort. But it must not be to the extent that I deny evolution. Right? I think you cannot live an amazing life without pain. It's not possible. Would you say like if we bring in like trauma, right? There's a like physical trauma. Like, you know, you're lifting heavy weights. What if you drop the weight and it smashes your collarbone? Or like then you have trauma emotionally. Like somebody's child, like spontaneously passing or something like that but those things right how do is it like trauma is always pain pain is not always trauma like how do we like i'm not sure but i can tell you uh, if something happens to you beyond your conscious control it happened that means you have no more choice but to evolve mm. like somebody drops a barbell on the chest and they crack Smash. their rib i don't know how to answer that go mm. fix it maybe start back again i don't know but I know if something like I've talked to many rape victims. Mm. I said, now that it has happened, even the choice to evolve is not there. You must evolve. Mm. Like if you have been abused, you must evolve. If not, living the abuse will be the perpetual pain. Mm. Now, again, I ask you this. Now, what is that the choiceless has happened that you must pass through the pain? Like sometimes somebody is poor and they're suffering. I said, sir... The choice of remaining poor is over, sir. Now you have to evolve to be a wealthy person. You don't have a choice. Like certain society, I tell, certain group of people, no more, no more hunter-gatherer, no more living the Neanderthal life. Now it's time to meet the world and evolve. And that decision to embrace the pain, I think can only happen by being conscious. Hmm. That means that's when you step in deliberately. If not, your default is to avoid. But you know, sometimes when you're in, you're very sad, you're very disappointed, 
you're very anxious, you're very depressed. You almost don't even know how you can evolve in that space. How would you, where would you, like, how would you start? Like somebody is... Depressed. Hmm. Or you're just sad. Find a sparkle. Find a hope. Find a life. You know, find a hope, find a life. Hmm. Maybe when I... I don't, I don't want to repeat this again and again. Mm. Until the time I met your mother, I, I was very alone. Mm. My whole life, I kind of had to be on my own. And that was my spark. Oh my God, I, there can be another person in my life. Mm. And that was enough. You know what I mean? That was enough. Mm. Until then, I could tolerate the pain. It just me, okay. So I, I have a feeling if somebody's in a deep, I first go look for that light. Look for that spark. Like, my God, this is possible. You know, like some of the greatest inventions, that's how it happened, no? Mm. A spark happened, no? The apple fell. Ah, the apple fell on the head or something. So I think what you need to do is look for that. That spark, look for that inspiration. Look for, my God, I can get out of this. My God, it can be better. My God, I can be more. Mm. Oh, it's like a puzzle, you know, you can't solve it. And suddenly you're like, oh my God, mm. we can do this. Yeah. And I think it does something to the brain. It opens up. In the Zen tradition, they call it a satori, a glimpse. Like you meet somebody and realize, oh my God, I can really have a relationship. Hmm. Or you, or like Jack-Jack, you never thought you'd love again when your cat died. <laughs> and suddenly Jack-Jack comes and he's like, it's hard to say he might be better than the other cat. Uh, he's not. Yeah, okay. Yeah. He's different. He's no, it's hard to not love him. <laughs> Yeah. It's hard to not love uh, him. It's hard not to love him. I'm like, he just knows. Could it be the unbearable pain is the absence of that light or that hope? Yeah. So maybe you have to find that light and that hope. And I hope if you're listening, especially for young people, find friends that will hold that for you. Mm. Find someone that will believe in you more than you do to yourself. A friend that reminds you, you know. Mm. And I think that is what this world needs, you know. Like when I was growing up, there's a lot of old ladies you know, in my in my in my village. They all don't know why they like me, you know, like I was the little even when I'm down and out, I'm getting into trouble in school or something, they will always look at me and say, You Come always here. appeal to middle aged women. I know. I'm a <laughs> magnet. I'm a magnet to grey hairs. And and they, they all will look at me and buy and they were like I'm here, are you boy? And I still remember eh, the, like, the worst of the period, whether it was true or false, something to hold on to. Mm. So could unbearable pain be, you are blinded, but nobody is holding the side for you? Yeah. Hmm. I know it's a very big subject, and I can spend years and research on this, but... I think I understand what you're asking. What happens if somebody's in unbearable pain? They cannot come out. They're caught. The brain is collapsed, you know. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, you have a support group. And I think sometimes you don't even realize you have it. Yeah. Like, you feel like... I once was telling Shavina, I was like, I'm feeling very intense all the time. I just can't let go of this feeling. And she's like, why didn't you talk to me? And I was like, yeah, why didn't I? Mm. You're just so in your own head. Like, yeah. there's, there's always somebody there. Friends. Real friends, people that are there on your side, people who will cheer you on. Do you know who you know who's a friend? Mm. You become 10 times more successful than, than them and they're cheering you on. Yeah. That's a friend. Like somebody, even if, if in your own heart, do you know who's your friend? If that person wins Miss World or something, you'll go like, yeah. Not that if they win, oh, I'm going to feel bad. Mm. They're going to make me feel like shit. Mm. I think you need community. You need people. Yeah. The strange thing about our eyes is it can't see itself. It sees the other. Mm. So you need the other's eye to see you too, right? Yeah. In Hindu, they say, you know, very beautiful. They say, Guru Parve Kodi Punyam. The sight of the Guru, they say, is 10 million blessings. And I think, I was thinking, what does that statement mean? No, they see you beyond. Mm. 
they see you beyond. You know, like if you go to the gym and you're lifting weight, you can't struggle. The instructor kind of relax, relax. I got you. I got you. I know you. You, you think you're going to die. I got you. Hmm. You know, like when you're diving, you know, some of the instructor holds your holds hand. Holds your hand and you're like, okay, 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 okay I'm, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I'm, 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 I'm off my league here now. <laughs> Maybe the pain exists because we are isolated, we have superficial relationships. And of course, you have to find relief. I'll give you the statistic. Eh? I hope I don't mess it up, but it's in the direction. Close enough. La. Close enough. They put a rat in a cage and they put water and another water laced with cocaine. Mm. That rat, 100% of the time, drank the cocaine laced water. Stone all the time. Then they say, oh, I guess we are addictive creatures. They are about to conclude the research. Then they say, no, no, let's test this. They build a rat park. Big place like this. And they have other rats and families and place to run around. And then they put the same water. Laced with cocaine. They say 90 over percent. Drank the clean water. There's a small dope hit within that, that group. <laughs> but 90 over percent avoided the dope completely. And they said it's because of social, society, mm. people, friends. So could it be this pain is unreal? It has become real because we have isolated ourselves? That's your mother. I know. <laughs> Pain. <laughs> so, in order to have a true friend, you got to be a true friend. Mm. Then you attract true friends, right? Yeah. And maybe hold each other, fellow travelers, you know, cheer each other on. I think they have created an ego, I can do it by myself. And this happens in school, you know. They should never have races. That you run against your friend and you beat your friend. I want friend against a friend. <laughs> They never got me. I stopped before the finishing line, waited mm. for my friend and finished the thing. <laughs> <laughs> and they were so angry. And then they said, why did you do that? I said, it's my friend. <laughs> I don't want, I want to share the cup with him. Mm. But that's when you know it's for real. Uh. I so mean, this subject of pain is actually irrelevant. It is connected to that Rosetta Stone that the guy wrote in the book, you know, about mm. society. About friends. About people holding each other, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I mean, I remember one of my oldest best friends, Natasha, when we would dance unless we were like, you do it, you do it, you do it. If she got it, you right. deserve it. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. And if I got it, same same from her. There we go. Oh my God. Because oh you even if I'm competing with my best friend, you better give 150%. Come on, don't stop. Don't stop at the finish line for me. Wow. Which means what you consciously must do is seek right company, right? Consciously, not accidentally. Most people who have friends are accident. By the way, they met in the club or the bar or something. They drank the same beer or something. I'm talking about very deliberately letting people into your life. Mm. So now, in order to conclude this, can I say, in the right circumstance, pain can be the greatest thing that ever happened to you? Ouchies! Go find a friend. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Boy.